Most software engineering job search process has a coding assessment now. Now this is done in two ways. One, either you're given a timed problem and you have to solve a couple of problems before the clock runs out or you're given a take-home coding assignment. In today's video, I'm talking about how to solve a take-home coding assignment so that you can clear and go to the next round. On to today's topic, take-home coding assignment. Unlike a time diversion, you're judged on two criteria: One, your solution and how you write your code. So let's talk about what are the aspects needed to make a good code. Let's start with the number one mistake that most people make, not adding test cases. After you write your code, it is expected that you also write test cases. Now these test cases serve two different purposes. One, to show that your code works. And second, you understand the different circumstances that your code will face. Let's take a simple example. The problem is that you're given two numbers and you have to find the sum of consecutive numbers between those two numbers. So for example, two and five. So you have to find the sum of two plus three plus four plus five, which is 14. Now the combination of two and five is your first test case. But what happens if the first number is larger than the second number? What about the difference between the two number being so large that the sum could be a large number? Can your code still handle this? One way to show that you've thought of all these scenarios is through your test cases. So make sure to add lots of test cases. Number two, structure of the code. I've seen this a lot of time. People write all of their code in the main function. Your code should be in its own function, taking input variables and giving the final answer. So in our case, you would create a function called sum of numbers that takes two numbers and returns the sum between them. Now, if you have multiple methods of doing this, you can create multiple functions to do that. This makes it easier to call them and even compare their performances. So in our example here, we have sum of numbers brute force and sum of numbers formula. In this example, the code is simple and can be included in just one function. But as your code grows in complexity, you should break it down into further functions. The ability to break down code into functions that are meaningful is an important aspect of writing good code. Number three, use classes. Now, if you're using object-oriented programming languages such as C++ or Python, make sure to use concepts like classes. And the same concept as before applies. If your class grows too big or complex, break it down into further classes. Now, you might be wondering where does the line come in? When do you break it down into child classes or when do you keep it as it is? Now, it is an art and there is no right or wrong answer. Just remember that you want to make it efficient, reusable and easily readable. Let's take an example. You're computing a path from point A to point B and you have two different algorithms to try. Breadth first search and depth first search. Now they both can be their own classes but you'll soon start to realize that there are some common components such as having a priority queue. You might want to create a parent class where you bring them together and then have two child classes to do the things that they are differing in. Number three, commenting or documentation. Now on two extremes, you have no comments at all and comment for each line of code. Both of these options are not great. You want to be somewhere in between. Here's how I think of coding. Every time there are a few lines of codes that represents one logical step in my algorithm, I write a line of comment. So in our original example, we could have a line of comment for handling input and output and a line of comment for when we are adding the sums. Here's another tip. When writing functions, you should also include the description for each input variable and give details on the return value. Furthermore, in Python 3, you can easily add the type of variable expected. This brings us to variable names. Remember, your code should be easy to read and understand and non-confusing. This means don't use variable names such as x, 
and why. Use descriptive variable names such as number of teachers or number of students. After writing your program, make sure to include a file on how to run your code. Now you might have compiled your code using C++ 11 or C++ 14. The other person doesn't know this. So make sure to include a readme on how to run your code. Now I know that was a lot. So to make it easier for you, I've created a checklist and you can download it from the description below. And remember, this is not just for take home coding assignment. When someone asks for a coding sample or a link to your GitHub, these are the same things that they are looking for in your code. Now, once you clear your coding challenge, the next step is a round of in-person interview. And almost always the very first question is tell me about yourself. So you might enjoy this video where we talk about elevator pitches to help you answer the question, tell me about yourself. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.